and welcome to this video. My name is Dr. Surakshit Patina and I'm going to explain to you about what are the various menstrual abnormalities you can face in various phases of your life and when you might have to seek treatment for the same. We all know that the menstrual cycle lasts around 28 days and the number of days of bleeding can be somewhere between 3 to 5 days. The menstrual cycle has two very important pathways. You have the ovarian pathway and the endometrial pathway. Can you guess which pathway most women are interested in? Here is a chart which I'm sure all of you would have already seen several several times where you can see the endometrial pathway and the ovarian pathway. Notice how closely interlinked all of them are and any changes or even a small deviation from this pathway might lead to menstrual irregularities or what we call as abnormal uterine bleeding. I'm sure all of you are already very familiar of the terms like amenorrhea, polymenorrhea, menorrhagia, metrorrhagia, menometrorrhagia, uh, oligomenorrhea and several others. But what I'm going to do in this video is break it down into what are the common uh, issues what you're facing during every phase of your life. For example, what you might face in the adolescence, what you might face during your uh, reproductive age group and during the peri and the postmenopausal age groups. And this will give you a clarity on when you might actually have to visit the hospital. First and foremost, coming to the adolescent teens. Uh, more than the adolescent teens, their mothers seem to be more affected by their menstrual issues. As you can see, either they are worried that their daughters are having menstrual uh, cycles too early or some of them fear that they are having it too late. So what is the normal age of menstruation? Any girl who is around 14 years of age and who has no secondary sexual characters uh, along with uh, amenorrhea they might have to seek treatment or anyone who is above 16 years with secondary sexual characters and no menstruation. These girls might require further investigation to make sure that they are not anorexic and also we might have to do a hormone profile for them to make sure all their hormones are in uh, sync. At the same time we also have to make sure they are genetically normal. Uh, if all of these come out to be normal all the investigation seems to be normal then probably the girl is only having a constitutional delay of period in this video i might not be able to deep dive into all of the situations so why you uh, women can have a constitutional delay and also i might not be able to look into each and every investigation as well as the management but if you guys want me to go ahead and do a video separately on that do let me know in the comments down below Okay, time for a myth bust. A lot of women come into the OP thinking that their daughters are not menstruating and this might leave a lot of toxic debris inside the uterus. At the same time, this make, might make their daughter also gain weight. This is not true. In fact, it's the other way around. Weight gain and stress might be the cause of why she might be having no menstruation or irregular menstruation. Now, coming to the women in their reproductive age group, what are the common menstrual uh, irregularities what they might be facing? The first and foremost, they might be having secondary amenorrhea, which means they have been menstruating normally before, but for the past six months, they have not been menstruating at all. So, six months of amenorrhea, we call that patient as secondary amenorrhea. What what is the commonest cause of secondary amenorrhea? You guessed it, pregnancy. The other most common causes can be polycystic ovarian disease, premature ovarian failure, uh, you can have hormonal imbalances, tract obstruction or most women can also be having tuberculosis which is a very very difficult thing to treat. The other issue what a woman in a reproductive uh, age group can uh, suffer from is either polymenorrhea or metrorrhagia. What does this mean? This is excess amount of bleeding that is bleeding for more than five days with the passage of clots or you have menstruation which is intermenstrual which means in between their period they might have a little bit of bleeding. So what might be the usual suspects which can cause them? One, you can have polyps. Two, fibroids. Three, you can have polycystic ovarian disease. Four, endometriosis and five, adenomyosis. So these are the usual suspects. Even after intercourse, a woman can sometimes have bleeding. So this might be because of some kind of tear which can happen inside the vagina. Women who are suffering from amenorrhea and polymenorrhea, simple blood work along with hormone analysis uh, with a transvaginal ultrasound scan, 
HSG and also a hysteroscopy can give us a fair idea about uh, what should be our next plan of treatment for this particular woman. If in case she is looking for fertility then yes the treatment will take another uh, step but uh, whereas if in case she is looking for just a relieving of the symptoms then our treatment will uh, take another course. Again, if you guys want me to deep dive into the investigations and the treatments for all the women who are suffering from amenorrhea and polymenorrhea, do let me know in the comments down below so that I can make a video on that. Coming to women in their perimenopausal age group, it is quite normal or common for these women to suffer from irregular periods at the same time. It is okay for them to have a little bit more bleeding than normal. but unfortunately our indian women they care more about what their husband has eaten in the morning uh, rather than how much bread they have lost throughout the day so this is a big problem for us in the op because i see women who sometimes have very low hemoglobin like as low as five or six this is a difficult situation for us to treat because first we need to do a blood transfusion to make sure the hemoglobin is back to normal and only then uh, treat the cause so if in case you have your mom or your aunt who you think is having a little bit of bleeding she might not even come and tell you that make sure you take them to the hospital immediately because most likely that they might have this weakness because of a low hemoglobin value and finally coming to women who are in the menopausal age group they are not supposed to have any kind of bleeding at all the moment a menopausal age group woman has bleeding she has to be evaluated immediately there is absolutely no other way to it she needs to go ahead and do a transvaginal ultrasound at the same time probably even get a pap smear done to make sure everything is okay because most of the time perimenopausal bleeding lead them to having some kind of cancerous growth so it's very important if a woman is menopausal and she is not under hrt treatment make sure that you take her to the hospital immediately Anyway guys, I hope you found this video useful. For more such informative videos, do subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure you also follow me on Instagram and probably go ahead and leave a like on this video. So let me know what you guys think. So until the next one guys, see you.